Hello, everyone. Welcome. I am just going to take a couple of seconds to let everybody log in. Um, but if you're just joining us, welcome. Uh, my name is Alex. I am an assistant director of admissions here at Rensselaer, and I am also the director of the medal program. So this is a info session totally for medalists. Uh, it is a broad overview of Rensselaer, but it's only medalists in the room. So um, we know typically you have some types of specific questions. So I'm really here to answer those questions and to give you some information about RPI. <clears throat> So let me just check to see if we have everybody in. All right, I think we're good to go. Um, so for those of you just joining, like I said, my name is Alex, both an assistant director of admissions here and also director of the medal program. So we have about an hour together today. And over this hour, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. We'll talk about the academic experience. We'll talk about student life. Um, we will talk about the application process and also in a little bit i will also introduce you to one of our student ambassadors charlie uh, and he's actually going to talk about his experience at rensselaer so you can get kind of a, a first-hand experience because i am not a student here i'm a person who reads applications and travels to your high schools uh, so when it comes to the student life experience we really want to make sure that you can interface with current students so these are just some general statistics about RPI that I want to make sure you have down. Uh, this is a good slide that just really sums up what we're all about. We're sitting at around 6,200 undergraduate students, very strong French freshman retention rate, uh, a lot of different options for majors, for minors, uh, and we'll talk all about that in a little bit. Um, but many of you have been recognized for this award because of your strengths in math and science. And we are a STEM institution, technically, but we offer a lot more than just STEM. And that's kind of why I'm here to um, really introduce you to a variety of things that we offer. Uh, but first off, the medal. So you were all chosen by your high schools for the medal. That's a really big thing. So congratulations to you. The medal is highly recognized and it's a super prestigious award. And it's also a scholarship worth $30,000 per, $30, per year. Uh, if you apply and are admitted and decide to enroll here. So it's a really great opportunity. And it's also us investing in you. Now, if you are applying to our five-year Bachelors of Architecture program, or if you choose while you're at Rensselaer to continue on into a fifth year and get your master's, which again, we'll talk about, we can extend the award into five years. If you are considering our BSMD Physician Scientist program, it would only apply to your three years that you're here because after that you go on to medical school. But this award is really great because it's our, for our largest singular merit award. So it's really important. When you apply, should you choose to apply, your application fee is waived uh, because you are a medalist. And we do not guarantee admission. Sometimes this is a misconception about the award, uh, but it does not mean that you're automatically admitted to RPI or anything like that. You still have to apply, you still have to be admitted and choose to enroll to ultimately receive the award. Now, the award does also come with an actual physical medallion, which you see on the screen here, and you will receive that during your freshman year. Another thing that's really important to know is that once you're a medalist, you are always a medalist. So if you wind up applying to RPI this year, getting in and then choosing to go somewhere else, and then you want to transfer later, you can still, you're still eligible to receive your medal. If you, uh, you know, decide to delay school for a little bit, take a gap year, come on later, you're still eligible, still eligible for your medal. So this is a really important award, and it's something that we're we have given to you because we have seen your promise and your potential in math and science. So let's talk a little bit about RPI starting way back in the 1800s. So we were founded in 1824 by two people who saw the potential of our city, Troy, New York, as a place to be educated and to ask questions and ultimately to learn to apply science to the common purposes of life. We're the first school to offer a civil engineering degree, the first in lab-based learning, and more recently, actually, one of the first schools to offer an environmental engineering degree. But technology advances quickly, and we've watched it grow and change over the last 200 years. So since 1824, we've evolved as an institution to modernize, to broaden our focus. And the overall goal of our education today is not to prepare you for the technologies that already exist but rather to prepare you for technologies that have yet to even be thought of. So Rensselaer education is one that acknowledges and harnesses the power of technological growth and change. 
We are located in Troy, New York, which is in the capital region of New York. We have a map here so you can check that out. It, we're about three hour drive uh, north of Manhattan, three hour drive west of Boston, and three hour drive south of Montreal. So really centrally located. We're an area of the state that economically caters to college students. We're actually one of about 13 colleges or universities in the area. And climate wise, many people know our area of New York as cold and snowy in the winter, but there's a lot more to upstate New York. I do recommend a good pair of snow boots, but we can talk more logistics about that later. Really, upstate New York is full of nature, full of opportunity, and also full of a lot of really interesting uh, STEM industries. Now, whether or not you have visited Rensselaer, and I know many of you probably haven't yet because of the pandemic, uh, whether or not you've visited, it's likely that you've used a product or benefited from an idea or research that originated from a Rensselaer alum. We have a rich history of alumni from over the last 200 years, including people like George Lowe, who was a space pioneer and engineer and actually president of Rensselaer. Um, he directed the Apollo program at the time of our first lunar landing. Carly Streif, who's the co-founder and COO of Bark & Co, the people who make a subscription service for your dog called BarkBox. Ray Tomlinson, who invented network electronic mail, or what we know as email. George Ferris, who invented the Ferris wheel. And even people like Commander Reed Wiseman, class of 1997, uh, who's a really great example of just how far a Rensselaer education can take you. His education at RPI and eventual connection with NASA, like a number of our alumni, took him all the way to the International Space Station, where he actually served as flight engineer for Expedition 41 back in 2014. Now, in 1999, Rensselaer's current president, Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson, began her tenure here, and she coined the phrase New Polytechnic to announce our commitment to modernization in the 21st century. She knew that changes needed to be made and worked to really shift the focus of learning to be more immersive and emphasizing the application of math and science. But the biggest piece of this shift was actually to an interdisciplinary mindset and an education. So students studying at a new polytechnic or how we identify ourselves are those who develop the skills to work from multiple perspectives in order to solve real world problems. Now RPI is made up of five schools represented in an interconnected way due to our interdisciplinary approach. You can see all of them here and we'll talk about all of them as we go through the presentation today. But it's really important to know all of these schools are schools that you can take courses in. They're all located right on our campus. It's not like any of them are far flung somewhere else. These are all right on our campus and all available to you. We have really low walls and low barriers between majors, between schools, so that you have the opportunity and the ability to study things that you're actually interested in. Now, RPI is known to many as a highly rigorous academic institution. And if you're considering RPI, that's probably one of the things that excites you about it. But over the years, we've wanted to make sure that students have the academic support that they need to be successful. You're all coming from different backgrounds. And even if school has been a breeze for you or whether it's been something that's you know really tried you, we wanna make sure that no matter how you learn best, we have, you have access to what you need here. We have a 92% re freshman retention rate, like I said, and we find that that's really a testament to a lot of the programs and services that we have for our students. Now, a hallmark of our curriculum and something that I wanna draw your attention to, especially as medalists, is that regardless of your major, we have data intensive and communication intensive courses required. They're called DI and CI courses. Because we found that there are so many fields that you plan to enter that are becoming increasingly data driven and that require really strong uh, ability to communicate. So we've made a commitment to things like data dexterity and a commitment to uh, making sure that our students are strong communicators. So you'll actually take two communication intensive courses, one in your major and another in the humanities, and two data intensive courses, one that's introductory level uh, and then a second higher level course that's project oriented to really bring your understanding of data into action. So we do these things because we know that regardless of where you're headed when you graduate, whether you're headed into the medical field, whether you're headed into engineering, industry, you're going to need to be able to use, manipulate, um, and understand data and also be able to communicate it. 
Another really great resource on our campus is the Advising and Learning Assistance Center, also known as ALAC. This office is home to all different types of academic supports for our students, whether you need group tutoring, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, mentors. Um, we have an early warning system where your professors can actually identify early if you're struggling with their course so that they can get you help before ultimately it's too late. Our Archer Center is a really great space for our students. Um, the staff there actually push into a lot of our different engineering and business courses to bring about a fuller and more comprehensive understanding of these fields. It's great to be an engineer, but if you don't know how to communicate your ideas, if you don't know, if you don't understand the business side of engineering, you probably won't go very far in that field. So the goal of the Archer Center is to help you develop not just those highly technical skills, but those less tangible skills as well well. So first up, when it comes to our schools, we have the School of Architecture. It's home to two different degree programs. One is our Bachelors of Architecture, exploring the artistic and the scientific aspects of the field. And that's a five-year pre-professional program. The second degree offered is our Bachelors of Science in Building Science. This is a degree that focuses far more on the components and systems within buildings and structures, along with the business side of architecture. So you get a little bit different of a twist. That's a four-year program. Now, both are really focused on sustainability and on built ecologies in a curriculum that's really forward-thinking and also studio-based. So when you come into RPI and you join one of these programs, you have your own studio for the five or four years that you're here. When it comes to immersive learning spaces on our campus, we have a lot of different options for you. Our fabrication shop is a space uh, that really brings to life the production process with equipment like 3D printers, routers, laser cutters, ceramic materials. And then the other side of architecture, that um, more technological side, you can find in our Digital Futures Lab. The Digital Futures Lab is home to things like um, high-end networked hardware, performance-based analysis systems, so that you can do things like simulation and visualization and analyze the designs that you're actually creating. So it's really a kind of a dual-pronged approach to architecture. Another really big part of our architecture program, uh, specifically for the Bachelors of Architecture, is study abroad. Now, study abroad isn't just for architecture, but it is built right into the School of Architecture, so or into our Bachelors of Architecture degree, so that's good to know. However, if you are not interested in architecture, you can still study abroad. Many students do because they understand that in order to have a global impact, they need to have the opportunity for global experience. So students at RPI study abroad in a variety of different ways sometimes throughout a semester, sometimes over the course of a couple of weeks doing a service project or doing a travel-oriented class. There are a lot of different ways for you to actually gain that international experience. A lot of students will also choose to do things like co-ops and internships abroad, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So next up, we have our School of Engineering. The basis of the curriculum in the School of Engineering looks to provide you with two things. One, a strong foundation in math, science, communication, and engineering. And then two, in-depth field-specific training. So something that's very specific to your field, like aeronautical engineering or biomedical engineering. Our School of Engineering is home to seven different departments that offer a total of 11 different degree programs, many of which also break down into concentrations. Our largest majors in the school tend to be uh, mechanical engineering, biomedical engineering, and aeronautical engineering. And at schools our size, most engineering programs are made up of around 21% female students, but at Rensselaer, our engineering program sits right around 31%. Now, you may be interested in engineering, but maybe not sure what which of the 11 different disciplines you would choose. And that's okay. Um, at Rensselaer, if you're interested in engineering, you don't need to declare a major right away or even apply to a specific engineering major. It's a really common initial path to just come in as an undeclared engineer and then figure it out as you go along taking your classes. You can also do this in our other schools as well, like our School of Science and our School of Humanities, uh, so that you have the opportunity to explore different areas before ultimately deciding by the end of your third semester what you want your major to be. When it comes to engineering specific spaces on our campus, we have the MIL, the Manufacturing Innovation Learning Laboratory, where students have access to industrial style equipment and actually move through the entire rapid prototyping and engineering production process. Our OT Swanson Design Lab, which is a more multidisciplinary space and really mimics what you might see in the industry when you're working on open-ended problems with open-ended questions given to you by real people in the industry. 
We have wind tunnels on campus, three major ones. Uh, we have a linear accelerator for those of you who are interested in nuclear engineering. We also have the forge, which is not pictured here, but I always like to take a moment to uh, give it a shout out because the forge is a student run makerspace on our campus. Some of you may have been exposed to makerspaces in high school before. We wanna make sure that you have access to those creative spaces on our campus as well. So the forge is really designed to promote and foster inclusive design and collaboration in our community by connecting students to each other and then also giving them space to use equipment freely like laser cutters, 3D printers, maker bots, all of that stuff without the notion or the need to be doing something for a class. This is just designing and creating and building and breaking all for the sake of learning. Um, and that's a really important part of our campus. Next up, we have our School of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences. The School of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences is home to some of our most diverse and interdisciplinary majors. While many of these majors would fall under the category of liberal arts elsewhere, at RPI, we view these majors, these topics through the lens of technology, creating what we would call liberal arts for the 21st century. Now, regardless of your major at Rensselaer, all students are required to take 24 credits in this school. That comes out to be about six courses over the course of your eight semesters at RPI. And the process is guided by 40 different pathway topics. So you choose two pathways. Each one has three classes within it. And the pathway topics are broad. They uh, really allow you to see how classes apply to real things that you're interested in. So pathway topics include things like artificial intelligence, law and policy, sustainability, strategic communication, even things like the well-being of body and mind. And then you take a three course sequence within that pathway to really have a deeper understanding of what that is and how to apply it to the real world, how to apply it to your major. Students choose these pathways because they're interested in them. So if there's something that you're not interested in, if you're like, I never wanna take a philosophy class, we're not going to force you to do that. This is as close to a core as you're going to get. We're not going to say you must take history, you must take this, you must take that. It's up to you how you pursue the humanities, arts and social sciences. And we find that our students tend to pursue them in a way that they can directly apply that knowledge back to their original field, if they're majoring in something other than the humanities. Now, as a school founded in science and technology, people often wonder, well, do the humanities really help me? Will majoring in the school make me hireable? Can I you know, take courses in the school and not feel like I'm wasting my time? By the data, we found that students who major in the humanities, arts and social sciences or pursue our humanities core are really capable of going into a variety of different fields, whether that's something more specific or more technical like video, music, or whether that's you know going more broadly into the entertainment industry, whether they're looking at something like artificial intelligence or whether they're looking into managing a sports team. There's so many opportunities if you look outside one specific perspective. Now, when it comes to our humanities, arts, and social sciences spaces, uh, one of our big ones is our Experimental Media and Performing Arts Center, also known as MPAC. This is a performing arts center where science and the humanities kind of collide. The goal of the space is to really infuse technology into the performing arts. We have our black box music studio suite, which is great if you're the type of person who likes to produce music or record music or any, any type of that. Um, it's a really multidisciplinary space that you can set up as you see fit and record. You can do voiceovers uh, and it's a newer space as of a couple of years ago and can be accessed by anyone on campus. Our product design and innovation studio is also a really great part of the humanities, arts, and social sciences. It's actually a course that focuses on product development, the process around it, and also emphasizes problem definition. So figuring out what your role is in discovering and defining problems, and then also the type of say that you have on the final outcome when it comes to products that are solving problems. Then we have our Lally School of Management. The Lally School of Management is home to two different degrees. We have a Bachelor's of Science in Business and Management and a Bachelor's of Science in Business Analytics. Both are really great and both are particularly good for students who love the idea of entrepreneurship and also math. They're really designed for you to explore the technological implications of business. So if you like business, but you've always wondered if you could take a more scientific or technological approach to it, this is a great way to do so within our Lally School of Management. 
The Lally School is AACSB accredited, which makes it among the top 5% of business programs in the United States. The curriculum within the school is flexible and allows you the opportunity to stay within the school and pick up multiple concentrations or even pick up a dual major. And the smaller than average class size usually lends itself to really strong connections with your professors, who usually also have pretty strong industry connections as well. Some of the places where our Lally graduates wind up working are listed here. Um, and similar to the questions that we get about the humanities, we also get, you know, what does a business school at a school that I know for STEM do for me? Well, it helps you see things from a technological perspective, but also through the lens of business. Combining both of those things make you a really, really strong person, whether you're looking to be technical or you're looking to be a little less technical. A big part of our Lally School of Business is the Severino Center for Technological Entrepreneurship. Uh, it is a space that's affiliated with the Lally School, but is open to all students. It sponsors competitions like Shark Tank. They provide membership and guidance from real entrepreneurs. They help our students network, help our students apply for patents. So if you're the type of person who's always wanted to grow a business or you like to invent things and create things, this is a really great space for you. They kind of help out with that entire process. And of course, you ultimately own your intellectual property, which is great. So then we have the School of Science. The School of Science is for many different types of students. Uh, some students find their way here because they have an interest in the research sciences and they're looking to go on to get their master's or pursue a PhD program in the science. But others find their way here because they want to use the sciences as a foundation for their career in things like medicine or teaching or politics or law. Now, the largest major in the school is computer science. Um, many of our students is one of our most popular majors at RPI, so a lot of students will flock to our computer science major, but other really big majors in the school include things like biology and chemistry and mathematics. Um, but you have a lot of options to diversify in the school. Things like interdisciplinary science or hydrogeology, you can get really in depth and study a very, very specific field, or you can keep it broad depending on what you're interested in. Now, Students, like I said, sometimes come to the School of Science because they're interested in pursuing med medicine. And a number of students pursue medicine in a variety of ways at RPI. One of the ways is through our Physician Scientist Program. I know that some of you are interested in the Physician Scientist Program. That's a seven-year program. Basically what it is, is in its, it's an accelerated medical program where you spend three years at RPI studying biology, you get your degree, and you move on immediately to four years pursuing your MD with a research distinction at Albany Medical College, which is basically right across the river from us. It's a great program. It's a program that you do need to apply into coming into RPI. So when you're applying to college, you would apply specifically to this program. And it's a program that's really built for students who have a passion for medicine, know that the only thing they want to do with their life is become a doctor, but also have a really strong uh, desire to do research in the medical field. The biggest thing about this program is that research distinction. That's what sets it apart from a lot of other programs like this. So if that's the type of thing that you're interested in, that might be a good choice for you. However, many other people, and I would say the majority of students who are interested in ultimately doing medicine, pursue medicine through our pre-health advising track. Our pre-health advising track is a little more low key. It allows you to major in what you want to major in without actually having to pursue definitely biology. And it, and it gives you a wider range of options. So maybe you don't want to get your MD. Maybe you'd rather go for a physician assistant, or maybe you'd rather go into veterinary medicine or dentistry or optometry. The pre-health advising track is able to provide you with a panel of, of advisors who help you make decisions about your future, prepare for your board exams um, and ultimately get into the medical school of your choice. In fact, that program has an 80% placement rate into top choice medical schools for our students. So it's a really great option. Now, in the School of Science, plenty of hands-on immersive learning spaces there as well from our Center for Biotechnology and Interdisciplinary Studies, which is where students do a variety of research in medicine and technology. It's a full research facility, so no courses are taught here, only professor's offices and research labs. Our CCI, or Center for Computational Innovations, which is home to one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world, which we have actually currently uh, opened up to the worldwide research community for those who are interested in studying the biological systems, but also the computational systems at play 
in understanding how to stop the spread of COVID-19. Um, and then a variety of other big research spaces, because ultimately research is a big deal. I know that many of you have a background in research. I've read your applications for the Rensselaer Medal Program. I know that a lot of you have experience, want to continue doing research, and that's great because at RPI, that's a big deal for us. We put about $100 million of funding into research every single year. We have a number of undergraduate students engaged in research early and often. So if you're interested in doing research, our students usually start right around second semester freshman year. First semester, you can always try for it, but usually first semester you're getting uh, getting your bearings at college and you're also trying to learn a little bit about your professors. Who are they? What are they doing? So that you can ultimately find a lab that suits you best. All of our professors' research and all of our students' research is online. So if you're curious about what people are researching, obviously this is a very broad list here, but if you're curious about what our professors are pursuing, go to our department websites. All of their research, their papers, their publications are listed there. So you can get a good idea of what you're getting yourself into, so to speak. Next up, our last kind of academic uh, slide is our information technology and web science program. Now, this program is a program unto itself. It doesn't fit into any one of our, our five schools because it's very multidisciplinary. It's super unique. It's only one of a few of its kind. And in this program, students start with maybe a little bit of an emphasis on computer science, but more an emphasis on mastering data, web, and information technology. So then they choose a specific track within that kind of greater, uh, greater understanding of the web, choose a track, and ultimately pursue the web and information technology through that track. So maybe something like medicine or something like computer science, depending on what you're interested in. This program is great because it's a little bit more broad than something like computer science or computer engineering. When it comes to computer and systems engineering, you're going to be doing a lot of hardware. When it comes to computer science, you're going to be doing a lot of hard coding and programming. But when it comes to information technology and web sciences, it's a little bit more open-ended and a lot more application-based. So this is a great program for those of you who aren't quite sure where you fit in on that spectrum. All right, so next up, I've mentioned it a couple of times, but it's also really important to know that there are a number of ways that you can personalize your education. We don't want you to come to RPI and just study something for the sake of studying it. If you come to RPI with a major in mind, start studying it and realize you hate it, we want you to change your major. Changing your major is pretty easy. Uh, it usually is, I think, a form signed by your current advisor and a form signed by your future advisor. Um, as long as you're in good academic standing, we want you to be studying what you want to study. But that also goes for those of you who have a lot of different interests. Not everyone has just one singular interest. And many of you are coming to RPI with, yes, great math and science skills, but also fantastic communication skills, also passions for the world around you, about social justice, about the environment. And we want you to be able to combine all of those things. So. It's pretty common at RPI to pick up things like concentrations, to pick up things like minors, and also dual majors. At RPI, we do dual majors. It makes your process a little bit uh, easier. It uh, allows you to double count certain requirements so that you're not doing suddenly like 48 credits in the humanities or something like that. So it's a really good opportunity, again, for you to expand a little bit uh, from, what you, from what you're originally planning to study and broaden your perspective. Another option to broaden your perspective or kind of seek outside of the one thing that you're studying is our co-terminal program. Now, the co-terminal program is something great to know about right now, but not something you need to know you want to do right now. Um, it's usually something that our students will apply to in their junior, sometimes even senior years. But it's good to know that at RPI, we actually offer you the opportunity to extend your education for one year and get a master's during that time. That's a really powerful thing. If some of you are thinking about getting a master's, usually if you're applying to a master's program after your undergraduate, it's gonna take about two years. But at RPI, you stay at RPI, you keep all of your Rensselaer financial aid, and you complete it in one year while still being in the community and around the professors that you have known and grown to love over the last four years. So it's a really great opportunity for you. And we also know that it gives you a lot of benefits, including uh, being more hireable uh, and ultimately having a higher starting salary. Students who graduate with their master's and go into their industry do report that. Now, it's not for everyone. 
some people are like, well, most people are like, I'm just going into my industry and that's great. But this is another option for you as well. Both are really good options for our students. But when it comes to going into your industry, no one is more in charge and no one is more helpful on our campus than the CCPD, our Center for Career and Professional Development. I actually just got off of a call with them a couple of hours ago, learning about all of the different things that they're doing this year virtually. Um, and I'm really excited to say that they have always been a unique support for our students and they're continuing to adapt in the current time. Now, the CCPD does a whole bunch of different stuff. They run year-long programs for our students who are really interested in the career search process. They also run one-off programs where you can go during you know, a time that you're having lunch and learn something about the professional world. Really depends on what you're looking for, but they provide all different levels of support. They're also really big on bringing employers to campus. This photo is of our armory where every year we host two career fairs. One of those is hosted by the Center for Career and Professional Development. Now over the course of the year though, they don't just end at the career fair. They bring close to 500 different employers to campus throughout the course of the year for things like our career fair, but also things like individual information sessions, kind of like we're all doing right now, except virtually, uh, bringing employers to campus for things like interviews so that if you're looking at a company that's across the country from us, you don't have to fly out to interview with them or interview with them on Skype. You can actually interview with them right on our campus. They provide a number of services for our students and they're a really great resource throughout your entire four years. They're also big on encouraging our students to get involved early because when you get involved early in the process of your own job search, you'll find some pretty awesome opportunities. Now, co-ops and internships or otherwise um, professional immersion opportunities are a big part of what the CCPD does, but also just a big part of the Rensselaer education as a whole. So co-ops and internships, but also things like research or study abroad or other professional immersion experiences are the things that bridge the gap between you being a student for 21 years of your life and you being a, an employed professional. So these things are really important to our students. This is a short list of some of the places that our students are employed for co-ops and internships throughout the year. However, this is not an exhaustive list. I believe uh, the list goes on for like 20 pages or so. If you wanna see it on the Center for Career and Professional Development website, I highly recommend checking it out. It's a really great resource and it also breaks down by major where students are getting co-ops and internships. So if you're sitting there being like, okay, well, I want to major in hydrogeology, but where would I wind up with a co-op or an internship? Check out that document. It's really, really helpful. Because ultimately, at RPI, having some type of professional experience is integral. Because we have a program at RPI that gives you a full semester to dedicate your time, your energy, not to your studies, but to actually getting professional experience. And that program is called The Arch. So the ARCH is modeled after similar experiences at other universities, but we do it a little bit differently. This isn't your typical co-op program. It's a little bit more broad and more flexible than that because that's what our students were seeking. So in the ARCH, we shift our academic calendar a little bit so that during the summer between your sophomore and your junior year, you actually stay on campus completing a full semester's worth of courses. After that summer semester, half of the junior class then takes the fall semester and goes away to a co-op, an internship, a research opportunity, while the other half of the class stays on campus. Then in the spring semester, they switch. So the half that was away comes back, the half that was here goes away. And that away semester is our students' opportunity to take what they've learned over the last two and a half years and apply it to their industry or to an industry that they might be interested in. Maybe they know where they want to go, maybe they don't. But this is their opportunity to take time away from the heavy academics and lean into the application. Because it's great if you understand technological uh, and mathematical equations. That's great. But if you haven't had the opportunity to apply those, we haven't done our job, right? We need to provide you with the opportunities to be able to apply yourself well, you still have the safety net of college because ultimately after that away semester, you come back and you finish out your time at RPI. Now, many people from their ARCH experiences and from their CCPD experiences wind up with really strong job placements. We are, I showed you on an earlier slide, I believe our placement out of uh, 
out of our students is around 85% within the first six months after students graduate. These are, again, a very short list of places where people wind up employed and also where people wind up at graduate or professional schools when they graduate from RPI. Again, not an exhaustive list, so please check out the exhaustive list. These are just some impressive places. But let's switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about student life. So when it comes to student life, uh, our students or our idea of student life here is governed by the idea of class or clustered learning, advocacy, and support for students. What that really means for you is that we want you to feel supported throughout your entire process. We've talked about the academic supports and the academic supports are really important, but so are the social emotional supports. So at RPI, you have access to a number of resources kind of on the student success side as well. Um, opportunities to get involved, opportunities to learn more about RPI, uh, starting really early on. So our students start out with orientation and then after orientation, move into something called navigating Rensselaer and beyond or affectionately NRB. NRB is an opportunity not only to get get a better understanding of RPI, but also get yourself introduced to Troy and also your classmates. That moves into your first year experience, which is uh, overseen by a first year experience dean. And then throughout your time at Rensselaer, you have access to a class dean that will stay with you from sophomore year on. So anytime you're looking for any type of social emotional support, whether you're looking for a class, whether you're looking for a job, this is another resource for you to go to. Another important thing to remember is that Rensselaer students do live on campus and are required to live on campus for their first five semesters. So freshman year, sophomore year, and that summer arch semester. After that, around 50% of our students move off campus. Now within the umbrella of student life, another really important thing is student activities. So we have over 200 different clubs and activities at Rensselaer. And just like you're involved in high school, and I know that all of you are super involved because that's one of the criteria points for the Rensselaer Medal, just like you're involved in high school, students at RPI are also really involved as well. Clubs and activities aren't just something that students use to bide their time at RPI. They're things that they do because they're genuinely curious and genuinely passionate about these areas. Whether you are looking for service clubs, whether you are looking for religious experiences, whether you are looking for affinity groups, we are always seeking students who want to contribute to our campus community in some way. There are a lot of students here who love to do service. There are a lot of students here who love music. There are a lot of students who uh, really want to come here and nurture a specific part of their identity or specific parts of their identity. And our goal with our student run union is to give you that access and give you those options to connect with others. Because when you connect with others, that's why you stay somewhere. You know, the education is fantastic, but if you don't connect with others, if you don't create a community of people that you want to come back to every year, it's not a full experience. So our goal is to always provide you with an experience that is comprehensive, not just academic, not just socially focused, but something that allows you to be engaged in a variety of opportunities, both in and outside of the classroom. You should also know, I know some of you are athletes, we are a D3 institution. So if you're looking into athletics, we're D3, except for men's and women's ice hockey, which is D1. Uh, we have state-of-the-art athletic facilities. I know Charlie will talk about his experience with athletics in a little bit. Um, but just to give you a broad overview, even if you're not the type of person who wants to play a varsity sport in college, we do have pretty competitive club sports in a variety of areas, and also intramural sports. If you're just looking to kind of hang out with friends, meet new people, those are some great ways to do it. Around 70% of our students actually participate in some type of athletic pursuit, but don't get me wrong, that also counts people who are learning to ice skate for the first time and doing it through intramural hockey. So it's not all competitive, it's not all intense. A lot of it is just for fun. All right, so before I introduce you to Charlie, I want to give you just a general overview of applying to RPI. I know that some of you have probably received emails or uh, even uh, postal mail at this point about one of our applications. So let's talk a little bit about the application process. At RPI, we do accept three different applications, the common application, the coalition application, and the candidate's choice. You've probably received an email about the candidate's choice. The candidate's choice is just Rensselaer's own application. All three of these applications are considered equal in our eyes. When I open up an application on my screen during our application reading season, I do not make an assessment of you based on what you chose. So if you are applying to every other school using the common application, 
you can also use the Common Application for us. It does not change anything for your admissions chances or your financial aid chances. Now, when you are applying, you have a number of deadline options. All of those are listed here, so I won't go into them too much, but just keep in mind two things. We do have early action, which is non-binding. We do also have two options for early decision, which is binding. The difference between those is binding means should you apply and be accepted, you do need to withdraw all of your other applications to other schools and enroll at RPI. Non-binding means that you can apply, be accepted, and wait for your other decisions at other schools to ultimately make your choice. If you are applying to our physician scientist program, do note that that deadline is the same as our early decision, so November 1st. However, it is not binding. It's just a really long application process because there is an interview involved. And that's the only program at RPI that requires an interview. So keep that in mind. When we evaluate you, we're looking at a number of things. It's a holistic review, which means it's not just your academics. It's not just one thing or your GPA. There's so much more to it. So the first thing we take a look at is your transcript. We look for a couple of things, um, and all of these things are probably things that you have if you're a medalist. So three years of science, biology, chemistry, and lab-based physics, and four years of math, at least up to pre-calc. To be a medalist, you need all of those things, so I'm not really worried about that. But in general, we're also looking for our students to have a pretty strong average and a challenging curriculum. We're not super focused on your GPA. We're actually going into your transcript and taking a look at all of the classes you've taken and how you've done in those classes. This year, we are test optional. So the second thing we look at typically is your SAT or your ACT score. But for you, we're going to be test optional. That means that if you have not been able to take an SAT or an ACT, or if you've taken it and you don't like your score, you don't have to submit it and it will not negatively impact you at all. It will not negatively impact your admissions decision. It will not negatively impact or change in any way your merit-based aid. We do not use those tests for merit-based aid anyway. So this is completely your decision. For the Physician Scientist Program, there are a couple of other things to keep in mind. So check that out on our website. I can send some links as well. But for the most part, we are test optional. The next thing we look at are your extracurricular activities and your leadership. So things you're doing outside of the classroom. Again, I know all of you are quite involved. So this is your opportunity to show us things like how you demonstrate being a responsible person, how you demonstrate your commitment to things. Um, then we look at your recommendation letter. We only need to see one, actually. I doubt that any of you will only send one, but we do only need one. It does need to come from your math or science, a, a math or science teacher. Beyond that, you can submit more. We will allow that. Please don't submit 12 or even really six. That's a lot of reading on our end and it's redundant reading. Usually by three or four, all of your teachers, uh, your extracurricular activity leaders, they will have used the, the, the thesaurus, excuse me, uh, for the word awesome. And they will have picked out every single synonym for the word awesome because you are very, very great students. If you're applying here, we do know that. So when it comes to your recommendation letters, think pretty intensely about who you're going to ask. There are a lot of people in your lives that you can probably ask, and that's great. So think about it carefully. Usually three or four is a good maximum. The next thing we look at, and the last thing for most of you, will be your essay, your personal statement. That thing that a lot of people stress out about, but that I promise does not have to stress you out. Your essay is just your opportunity to ultimately share with us something that you care about, something that we haven't been able to see during all of the other pieces of your application. So what's something that you're excited about? What's something that you're passionate about? Um, those things are the things that allow us to see how your mind works and what you care about. Those things are just as important as things like grades when it comes to understanding you in this holistic process as a full person. The last thing for a few of you will be a creative portfolio. If you're applying to our architecture or music majors, we require a portfolio. And if you're applying to games and simulation arts and sciences or electronic arts, we don't require it, but you can submit one. If you are applying to any other major, anything in engineering, computer science, anything like that, we do not require or recommend a portfolio. So don't try to send extra stuff. Don't try to send us uh, apps or codes or things like that. They won't be evaluated ultimately by faculty like these required or optional portfolios will be. 
So one last thing before I turn it over to Charlie is just a general understanding of financial aid. Obviously, we talked about the medal already. You know that should you be admitted and decide to enroll, that $30,000 will be on your statement every single year. 100% of our students do receive some type of financial assistance from us, but we know that the medal is the highest singular merit-based scholarship. If you are a U.S. citizen, permanent resident, or a Canadian citizen, you're automatically considered for merit-based aid. And if you're seeking need-based aid, we require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. If you have more questions about financial aid, uh, you can also type those in the chat. And of course, any questions that we don't get to today, we will answer and follow up with afterwards. When it comes to the cost of RPI, we understand it's not like the metal covers the entire tuition or anything like that. We're a pretty expensive place to go to college, but we also know that we have a really high return on investment. That's what we hear all the time from our statistics, but also anecdotally from our students who graduate from RPI and go out into the workforce. They're earning well above the national average when it comes to their average starting salary right out of college. And they're also really strong when it comes to paying back their loans. So students who take out loans for RPI ultimately wind up paying them back typically early and living in pretty expensive parts of the country. So that's also a really important thing to keep in mind. So I've been talking for a very long time and you're probably very sick of me now. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over briefly to Charlie. Charlie Sampson is going into, I believe his senior year at RPI. Um, he can correct me if uh, I'm wrong on that, but I'm going to turn this over to Charlie so he can give you a little information about his life. Uh, so, Charlie, if you want to hop on here, and I'm going to go into the chat a little bit just so Absolutely. I can see what questions we've received. If you have other questions, please send them in. We'll answer them after Charlie's done. Charlie? No problem. Thanks, Alex. You did a wonderful job. You were not annoying any of us, I promise. Um, okay, I will take control of the slides here and say hi to everybody. Um, my name, obviously, is Charlie Sanson. Um, I am a senior, going to be a senior at RPI, um, so I'm class of 2021, very excited. Um, before I talk a little bit about RPI, I want to talk a little bit about why RPI for me. Um, so I came from a private high school. My school was a graduating class of something like 95 kids. Um, and I looked around at a number of places. I sort of wanted a big state school experience. Um, I knew I wanted to play soccer in college, and that was really important to me. Um, so I had a bit of a tough choice. But I ended up coming to RPI for Accepted Students Day, and as soon as I stepped on campus, I just had a visceral sense that I was in the right place. Um, I just felt like these were my people, and the more I got to know people at RPI, the more I sort of discovered that everyone has a passion here. Um, everyone cares about something, whether it's their major or an extracurricular, their sport or their passion. Nobody floats through life at RPI and there's, you can engage with everyone about something. And that's my favorite thing about the school. And so keeping that in mind, going forward through the rest of what I'm going to talk about. Um, so I was the rare kid who knew exactly what they wanted to do at 15 years old. Um, I wanted to be an industrial and management engineer. So I love efficiency. I look at situations both in my life and in you know, business and academia and say, what is the most efficient way to make something happen? And that's what being an IME is all about. Um, so I am part of the IME Honor Society here at RPI. Um, that's a really cool thing because we get to hear guest lecturers uh, from local businesses that'll come in and talk to us about the way that their businesses operate. Um, we'll then get to go out and do some field trips into the community. Uh, so this year, excuse me, uh, we went to a manufacturing plant and got a chance to look firsthand at what they were doing and make some suggestions and ask some questions about how to improve efficiency on the factory floor, things like that. Um, I do just want to go back to what Alex said a minute for a minute about getting an opportunity to take both engineering and humanities courses. Um, so I just finished an internship at a consulting firm in Boston, and it was kind of unbelievable to me how much of the skill set that I needed was intrinsic. It was actually the ways of communicating that I'd picked up in humanities courses and knowledge of how to fit in teams and organizations much more than calculus or 
you know, uh, operations research methods, you know, obviously that's an important thing and you need to have that for whatever you're doing, but that humanities education really helps you when you get into the real world applications of this. So I talked a little bit about why RPI already. Uh, for the prospective athletes out there, I will say that it's a great merger of academics and athletics. So my parents um, supported me playing soccer in college, but they also told me I had to go to a place that reached my academic potential. Um, and this was kind of the perfect, the perfect marriage of those two things. Um, so soccer is a big time commitment for me. It does take up a lot of the time. RPI, we have a really good team. Uh, we were finished number seven in the country this year. We're number four at one point and had a 12 or 13 game winning streak in there. Um, made it to the NCAA quarterfinals. Um, and have, as you can see, some, some rather fun celebrations uh, along the way during the year. Um, I always tell people, you know, you have room for your academics, your athletics, and pick one or two other things. Um, so my things are an admissions ambassador, so I do campus tours, things like that, um, answer the phones. So if you call the admissions office, there's a chance to hear my beautiful voice on the other end. Um, but I'm also part of the Soul Survivors Club. So that's a club centered around raising awareness and funding for survivors of sexual assault and sexual violence. Um, and that's a cause that I'm really passionate about. A lot of guys from my team and the women's soccer team are on that. Um, we do a couple of fundraisers every year. We have events to raise awareness around campus. Um, we do a silent march through campus one day a year. We also have a fundraiser where we sort of spray paint these sort of blue footprints all over campus. So you'll be walking from class to class and see them. Um, and that's something we do to help raise awareness, cause I'm really passionate about. Some people do outing clubs, some people do Doctors Without Borders, Habitat for Humanity, whatever you want to get involved in, there's an opportunity. Um, so I, Alex was talking about the ARCH program earlier, I am a member of the first class to have gone through the full implementation of the ARCH program. Um, so I took classes last summer after my sophomore year and then had this spring during what would have been my junior year off to go do an internship, um, which I did with ZS Associates, a consulting firm in their Boston office. Um, you can take a look there at some of the, the projects that I was able to work on during my time in the office. Um, you know, I loved the collaborative, cooperative environment. It was right for me. Um, and I will say that the CCPD was incredibly helpful in getting me to that place. And I was able to do really well once I got there and I'm actually going back full time after graduation most likely, um, but I would never have gotten there without the CCPD. So they helped me work on my resume and the cover letters that I sent to them. I went in probably two or three times to do mock interviews with people at the CCPD. Um, so utilizing that resource that's there for students really helped and they told me you know i talked to zs at the career fair but they told me make sure you get your application in before the career fair so they've got all of these little tips and tricks that kind of you know make the difference between you and a number of other people um one thing i will say for rpi and its connections is this internship that i did for zs uh, was created specifically for rpi students doing arch so zs has hired a lot of RPI grads over the year. And one of the partners at the firm saw that RPI was doing the ARCH program and made a special internship position just for RPI students, which is something you wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. Um, so my future plans, I am doing my senior year, uh, really excited for that. And then going to consulting after graduation, um, but then, you know, I did want to take a second to piggyback off what Alex is saying. I'm doing that a lot. She covered a lot of the topics here. Um, I am considering going back to school after a couple of years for my MBA. Um, and one of the things that I really like about RPI is the business school here and the ability to continue some of the relationships that I already have with my professors and then, you know, come back to them if I come back for an MBA and be able to build off those connections and make new connections among the graduate population. Um, so that is pretty much all I have for you. That is my quick spiel. And I think I will turn it back over to Alex as we- Maybe, some yeah. Questions. Um, I, so 
we've received some uh, some questions already. Um, so if you, especially if you have any questions regarding student life or experience um, for Charlie, send those into the chat. Um, and I will finish up just a couple more slides before we do uh, the rest of these questions. So. Um, one other thing I just want to let you all know about is our virtual tour. Uh, obviously, you can't come to campus right now, um, and we're really sad about that. It's part of my job and Charlie's job to uh, meet you all in person. So this is super weird for us, uh, and we really hate that you know we can't be on campus, but we are really concerned about everyone's safety, and that's a huge priority. So until we can ensure that everyone on our campus community and you all visiting campus can be safe, check out our virtual tour and other virtual experiences. We also have a really, really uh, active social media presence, especially on Instagram. Um, if you haven't checked out our Instagram, I mean, they're going live constantly. There are takeovers like every other day. You might see Charlie on there. <laughs> multiple times. I've been on Charlie's multiple times. I'm, I'm the star of the show over there. Um, but it's a really great way to see, um, to see how students uh, like actually live and interact with each other and go about their daily lives at RPI. So definitely check us out, RPI admissions on Instagram. Um, and then, oh, yep. Do we have a, do we have yep, a link to the ambassador email? Yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> the email real quick. Um, yeah, so we have a, an email address set up. You can see it, it's admambassadors at rpi.edu. Um, that is an inbox that is checked by students um, please reach out to us. We are, we are a fantastic resource um, and we're there for you to answer whatever questions we may have. And not that Alex and the other admissions counselors won't give you the right answers or anything, but if you want a little bit of a different perspective, a student perspective on some of the things you're wondering, I highly encourage you guys to write into that email. Um, and Definitely. Hear I mean, I cannot us. speak to the Rensselaer student experience. I have never been a student at Rensselaer. Uh, so when it comes to having real direct access to students, that, that ambassador's email is fantastic. Um, all right, so we have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, I've answered some in the chat already, uh, but Rodman uh, just asked, is it possible to dual minor at RPI? We talked about dual majors and concentrations. I would say if there's space in your schedule, um, and if there's a lot of crossover between your two uh, potential minors, I don't see why not. But it does definitely take planning. Anything, dual majoring, uh, minoring, uh, picking up a concentration, that does take planning. It's not like you just wind up suddenly one day with a minor. I mean, occasionally that could happen. But usually you do have to think about it and talk to your advisor and um, create a real plan for it. So I would say if you're genuinely interested in doing a dual minor, I recommend thinking about how you can make that happen early on. Did you have anything you want to add to that, Charlie? No, I was just gonna say, you know, personally from, from my experience with classmates, um, there is a, a little bit of a level of diminishing returns with minors. So one, helpful, two, might be a little less helpful. Um, That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, you're putting put in a lot of energy, uh, but it's it's only a minor. It's not major, which is why a lot of people do wind up choosing to dual major. All right. Uh, question for Charlie: How did you get involved with varsity sports at RPI? Sure. Um, so, great question. One we definitely get a lot. Um, so, I started my sports contact with RPI by emailing my coach, probably my sophomore year of high school or something like that. Um, and I would email him about the tournaments I was playing in. And also I came to uh, prospect days at RPI, which is something I really, really um, would recommend. So there are some individual sports where you can just sort of send your times to coaches like running or swimming or things like that. Um, but for other sports, the team sports, the biggest thing is getting the coach to see you play. So you want to be, you know, in communication with them, sending them emails um, and talking. And so that way you have a prior relationship when you get to campus. Um, you can try to walk on. So all D3 schools are required to host walk-on tryouts, um, but your chances of making it, even if you do walk on, are definitely better. If you've talked to the coach, you know who they are. Um, and you've reached out and sent videos and-, and Nice. And them. then another one for you. Um, what has your student experience off campus in Troy been like? 
So I really like Troy, actually. Um, Troy, you know, sometimes sort of jokingly gets referred to as being in the middle of nowhere, but it's actually in the middle of everywhere. Um, so it's less than a day from like six or seven different fun things. Um, so me and my friends have been up to Montreal. Uh, we've been down to New York City. We've been over to Boston. We've been skiing in Vermont. Uh, we go to Saratoga for concerts. So you know, within an hour to three hours of RPI, you can do literally anything under the sun, um, you know. And then the Troy area itself is actually really, really nice. We have a cute little downtown. Um, I love to eat in Troy. Troy's sort of claim to fame is that there are almost no chain restaurants in the entire town. It's all little family-owned places um, that are fantastic to eat at. And it's a very original feel that you're not really going to get anywhere else. We have... It, so it's kind of a hipster town. We have a lot of like bagel spots and tea houses and things like that. So I actually really, really enjoy Troy. I would say I find myself down there at least once or twice. Nice. A year, yeah. And I've lived in this area for um, 11 years at this point, I think. This is making me feel really old. Um, but I actually, I came to this area for school myself. Well, I didn't go to RPI. I was in the area for school. And I have to say, I mean... Troy itself, fantastic, especially a great place to like bring your friends, bring your parents uh, when they visit. It's it's such a cute place to walk around and hang out. Um, but it's also a really nice space to just be able to go study with your friends and relax. Oh, Charlie, I think you're okay. You froze. Back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's such a nice area. And overall, I mean, um, the Albany area, the Schenectady area, which is a little west of here, Saratoga, like Charlie was saying, there's a lot to explore, which is really nice. Um, let me see. We have a couple of questions, a couple of specific questions. What are some of the internships that RPI or RPI students go to before medical school? Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. I would check out the internships uh, and co-ops, places that people go when they're majoring in biology, which is on that document on the CCPD website. Um, I can actually look for that and email that out. Um, but yeah, I would start there. I don't know specifically. Uh, and then... I think research. I think research is a little more mm -hmm. common for people yeah, going into school. Yeah, very true. A well. lot of research and shadowing as well. Uh, let's see. We have lots of questions. I love this. Okay. Um, does RPI offer D three men's ice hockey? No, only D one. Um, our our hockey team, uh, both men's and women's, is D one, not D three. Uh, we do also offer club ice hockey as well, though. Um, so if you're looking to play kind of at a lower level, um, or not a lower level, so much as like a less competitive level, they're really good. Not <laughs> they're good. Yeah. They're, they're good. Let me let me not mischaracterize that. I mean those. Club hockey is usually for people who are just like, I don't want to play D1. Um, so that's a, that's a good option for you as well. Um, how soon can you declare a dual major upon coming to RPI? Usually your second semester, I would say. First semester, uh, you're still figuring things out. And then uh, talking to your advisor, you can add on that dual major. Is tennis offered as a D3 sport? Yeah, it is. Men's and women's tennis. Um, and from what I know, really great teams. They clean up. Yeah, yeah, they clean up. A true sure. athlete. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. Okay, given the ARCH program in sophomore summer, are there any other opportunities for students to do study abroad? Or do students use the ARCH to complete a co-op abroad? Uh, both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, both. Um, <laughs> you could do it either way. So, uh, there are... Yeah, there, there are a number of options for your arts experience. You can do study abroad. You can do a co-op or an internship. You can try and get an internship or co-op abroad. It might require some proficiency in a second language. Um, but I would definitely say that ARCH offers you a really good opportunity to go abroad. Um, and that's, that's definitely something you can take advantage of. I think we have programs to Singapore. 
and one other place that I'm totally blanking on. But the, I think there are a couple of sanctioned programs as well that have some sort of shorter and study And also, I mean, uh, many of our students will do like travel oriented courses. So some classes that you take at RPI have a two week travel component afterwards, which is really cool. Um, and then other like clubs and activities on campus, like Engineers Without Borders, Engineers for Sustainable World, they actually do service projects internationally. I mean, right now, obviously nobody's going anywhere, um, but once, once things get back up and running again, that's also another option for you. All right, let's take a couple more. I know it's a little bit after four. Uh, let's see, do I have anything else? I have some specific questions that I'll answer in the chat. Um, last call. I don't see anything else. Um, I'm just gonna answer these two specific questions in the chat so I can think about them. Thank <laughs> you. 